I don't normally film in my bathroom, but the reason I'm here today is because I'm going to show you an item or a group of items that I always keep in my bathroom. And I have done this for years and years. It has grown over the years to include different things, but it's my emergency trauma and triage kit that I keep in my bathroom. I typically keep it up in a closet, like this one up on a shelf, um, in a plastic tote. And that just makes it easier to grab. You could keep it in a cardboard box. You could just stack things up there neatly. I have found though some of the stuff that I have is a little unruly and it tries to jump out and fall down. And so it's just been easier for me to keep it in a plastic tote. But today I'm gonna to show you a few of the things that I keep on hand for emergencies, for trauma and triage. These are not things I'm using every day. In fact, only a handful of these things have I actually ever used, but we have them on hand in case we ever need them. So the first thing I wanna show you is this. These are gloves, they are non-powdered. Um, and we got these at a scratch and dent for $3.99, which is a great deal. But what I really want you to take note of is the size that we got. It's an extra large. Okay, so my husband is a big guy. He's six foot four. And so if he is going to be using these, he's going to need an extra large. If I'm going to be using these, I don't need an extra large. However, if you're gonna keep one set on hand, which is probably the better idea because like there's a lot in here. I'm not even sure how many are in here, a hundred. If you're just gonna keep one on hand, make sure it's a size that's going to fit everybody. And so we went ahead and went with the extra large so that he could wear them, but I could also wear them. They just would be a little bigger and bulkier, bulkier than I'd like them to be, but that's okay because it's an emergency. So that's my first piece of advice is get something and definitely get the non-powdered um, and get something that'll fit everybody. So your biggest person get that size. Another thing we keep on hand is medical tape and then also some of this stuff, these elastic bandages. It's really nice to be able to bandage up an ankle, a wrist, a shoulder, and you can do that pretty well with this. They come with these little butterfly clip things and um, they just are very fast to use. And honestly, you'll probably use these more than just emergency type situations because if you have somebody who kind of needs an ankle taped up or something along those lines, these are really good for that to just kind of hold that muscle, that bone in place. Now, obviously these are not for broken bones. This would be for a sprained ankle or a sprained wrist. Of course, always, always, always have some isopropyl alcohol on hand or some sort of alcohol, some sort of high alcohol content, even if it's like vodka, go ahead and keep something like that on hand to be able to clean out wounds, to clean off items that maybe have gotten dirty. And the best you're gonna do in an emergency situation is to have either alcohol or rubbing alcohol on hand to clean those off. I also keep, um, like lighters to just heat, like needles and things like that to um, kind of kill off anything. So that's something else that I keep on hand as well. Now, my husband is in the military, and so a couple of things you're gonna see here in a second are military grade, and that's where they came from. Um, they're things like these bandages. They show you on the back how to use them. This is a hemorrhage control bandage. It is completely sucked in like this. So it'll be as small as possible. And then when you rip it open, it will be big enough, you know, to control hemorrhaging, but it does show you on the back exactly what to do, which I really appreciate. But we have quite a few things like this um, because my husband is in the military. He does have his combat life saving, so he is able to start an IV and he's pretty good with stuff like that. We also have like field dressings and this one, yep, it's camouflage. So, you know, in case you're trying to hide in the woods or something, here, here's your dressing. Now, another thing that he insisted that we have on hand was some sort of tourniquet. And you can pick these up at Amazon. Um, you can pick them up at medical supply stores. This is the piece that turns and this would stop um, 
hopefully stop or slow down a massive loss of blood. Again, we're talking emergency trauma. We are just trying to get things taken care of so that we can get someplace where there are medical professionals. But my husband does have probably three or four of these on hand. I really need to learn how to use this because like all I know is that you turn this thing to tighten it in order to um, cut off the blood supply. But obviously you kind of need to know what you're doing with these, but we do keep a few of these on hand just in case we would need to do something quickly in order to get somebody to the hospital. And then from all of my surgeries and my babies and things like that, I have a lot of these gauze pads and we have kept them all. In fact, I have one I'm using as a bookmark in this really great book, which I will be sharing with you here in a second. But, um, you know, a lot of them came like this. But then I also, when Mercy was born and we had all these gauze that we were changing out in her mouth, behind her ears, they would give us just piles of these. Well, I kept these because you never know when you might need to stop some bleeding or stick something like this in somebody's mouth or pad a bandage. These are perfect for that. And so I keep a bunch of these in a Ziploc bag in my emergency kit. Okay, so I promised I would tell you about this book. And <laughs> I will take that out. I promised you I'd tell you about this book. This is a really good book for natural remedies. And in this book is one of my absolute favorite recipes. And that is for this people's paste. This was actually made for me by a friend, but she used the recipe in here. And this is basically a bleed stop or a stop bleeding. If you've ever heard of those where it's a clotting agent, this is all natural. I do have a box of the stop bleeding um, but I also have this. So this is the stop bleeding. And yes, that is Lou Ferrigno on the cover of it. Um, this is the same idea behind the people's paste. They both clot. And these are only to be used for major bleeding trauma. Not some little, you know, cut inside here. Let me open this book here to show you exactly what's in here because this isn't something you just put on anything and I think sometimes people get in their heads that that's what you do and no this really is supposed to be a major thing and I actually have used this um, I used it when Mercy gashed her head open on a fireplace after she was dancing around in the living room she was about two years old and um she and her sister were dancing around. She hit the fireplace. We immediately put this on it. It stopped the bleeding. She has maybe a tiny, tiny, tiny little scar. In fact, less of a scar than she would have had if we had gone in and gotten stitches. But we felt like, you know, once we were for sure that the bleeding was stopped, and it definitely was, we just left it on there and it did its work and it turned out perfectly. Um, so People's Paste is a mix of slippery elm, comfrey root, myrrh root, bayberry, and garlic. You can mix this with oil to put on the wound, but I just used it dry directly on the wound. I'll show you inside the bottle just so you can see what it looks like, um, hopefully. And it, <laughs> I can really smell it. Um, but it, it did really, really well. So yes, I definitely highly recommend this book, especially if you are looking for natural remedies to manage emergencies and things like that. I definitely think though, you should have some regular medical supplies, but this book, like I said, very good book. It has all kinds of natural remedies in it. And one of those that I also keep on hand is activated charcoal. I keep a big bag of it on hand. We use this to draw out things, to draw out infections. It makes a great poultice. Um, if you have a splinter in your finger and you just are not getting it out, make a poultice of this and it'll draw that out. Charcoal, that's what charcoal's good for, is a drawing agent. And so I do keep a big bag of that on hand. I also keep um, bentonite clay. And I keep this, I'm looking around here, I can't find it. I also have a big bag of it as well and I just refill 
this one because this is easier to scoop from. But I keep this on hand for rashes and stings and bites and um, wounds like that. And I do make this into a clay by adding just a little bit of water to it and then tapping it on. Um, this has been great for poison ivy or bug bites. And so that is also in my emergency kit. One last thing that I keep in my emergency kit is a sewing kit. That's correct. If you are in an emergency situation and you need to sew something up and there is no way you're going to be able to get to an ER or to a doctor I keep this only for this purpose. It has not even ever been opened, but there is a pair of scissors, which is going to be nice and sharp because it's new. There are needles and there's thread in here. And this is, like I said, only for emergencies. This is something, again, that my husband, who is in the military, insisted we have something like this on hand so that if you had some sort of dire situation, you had something you would be able to sew somebody up with. Now this is just a small bit of what I keep on hand. A lot of what I keep on hand for emergencies are in our vehicles. So I have a box in our car, I have a box in our van, and my husband has a box in his truck that we keep for emergencies as we're traveling um, because you aren't always gonna be in your house when something happens. And so we wanna make sure that we have things, especially with a large family, you wanna make sure that you have enough and you wanna make sure that you are prepared for crazy things to happen and you have enough of those things to take care of people. So bandages and first aid ointment and things that keep well, I keep those in the van and the car. And I will at some point do a video to show you what exactly is in that box and that kit in my van so that you can see what I keep on hand for emergencies but I don't have time for that today. I just wanted to kind of quickly show you what we keep here in the house. Now there are all kinds of other things that I keep here in the house. You know, we have everything from nasal spray to traditional pharmaceuticals to herbs and essential oils. There's all kinds of stuff that I keep, but this is really my triage trauma box. This is where I go if we have had a major event and I want to be able to tell somebody exactly where the people's paste is, exactly where the gauze and bandages are. I want them to know so that if I'm dealing with, which is what happened with Mercy, our youngest, if I'm dealing with some situation there, that I can send somebody to go find exactly what I need. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you have created a place for those things and you know exactly where they are. One last thing I will say that I would love to have on hand that I do not have on hand as yet is something called a life vac. It is a device that goes over the nose and mouth of a child or an adult. Um, you have to get a different size piece and it has a kind of a plunger situation where it will pull out something that a child or an adult is choking on. I just think that would be a really good addition to all of this. I just haven't bought it yet. It's in my Amazon cart and I haven't grabbed it yet. And I just, I just need to do that. But that is something I would highly recommend.